Evening. A little bit of a different view tonight. So, everyone hear me okay? Let me know in the chat. That'd be great. I'm sure you can hear me anyway. So, how is everybody? Everyone all right? Got a little bit of a little bit of a guilt here. <laughs> oh dear. So, no. Not to, well, Naptober, as we shall say. One of those things. I'm just going to check because I'm not getting any reply on the chat. Let's see if I can hear myself. Do, 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 do. Your channel. Yes, I can. I can hear myself. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So yeah, Naptober, that glorious month. Uh, so this whole month is going to be based around Napoleonics, the whole thing. I've, I've spoke about it before. And at the moment, I'm doing some cavalry. So done my first ones here. I always do a base. So like uh, one base or one unit. And I would like to see that, you know, I get it to how I want it to be. So these guys are exactly how I'm I'm looking for the whole unit to be. So I'm going to have, I think there's 12 cavalry, so there's going to be six bases. Yeah, six bases, two by base. But the way I'm doing it, I'm painting a base at a time. Cheers, Tony Tiger. Five minutes to, to myself. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, wicked. Happy days. Um, So yeah, painting these up. Doing something a bit different with the horses, and I'm doing a bit of extra on it. So I've painted some white bits there. I've done a sock there. I've also painted some little spots on the back just to just to give them a little uh, bit of variety. I've also painted the eyes on my horses. I do that with all my horses. I just think it gives it some character. But I paint a base up at once. So done that one. Done the two horses. I've got other horses on the go because I normally contrast and when I get two minutes because they take a couple of minutes to do. But I've got two uh, guys here, two cavalry, uh, two, both got sabres and they're both from the black powder uh, start set. So you get 12 of these guys in there and I'm trying to think what they're like me. They're called, they're Chevert or Cavert. And shoot, they're they're, uh, they're called horse hunters in English, so really simple to do. All I've done is I sprayed these green with an army gray, army painter green spray primer, the orc green, and then I've used a a phonian camo shade uh, green wash over these, and then it's just a case of filling in the details. And there isn't that much because these guys are mainly green. So you can see with this one here, I've done a bit of red on already. And that's pretty much all the red for the whole model, um, including the back there. That's the red. So I just need to do that with the next one. Just getting my brushes nice and tip top. Just make sure that camera's nicely sorted. Wicked. So how is everybody this evening? And if you're interested in what red I'm using, I'm using Mephiston Red from Games Workshop. And this is watered down already in the bottle. Obviously, give it a little shake. I'm using a wet palette as well. And that's from the Army Painter. You only literally need a couple of drops on the on the wet palette. And uh, yeah, happy days. I hope everybody's all right. Everyone's doing all right. So let's just start in painting this. Really, I've got a video coming out tomorrow as well on. Napoleonic painting tutorial on how I paint uh, great the Napoleonic French great coat infantry, so like 1815. I've done a painting video guide for that. 
and I'll be doing some more you know, video guides as well throughout this whole month because this whole month is going to be focusing on Napoleonics and I'm quite excited to be fair um, I don't know what everyone else's thoughts on obviously if you you're watching my content at the moment it's because you like Napoleonics and I'm quite heavily in on the French so I've got some old guard as well that, that I've just bought for, which uh, I'm not regretting quite looking forward to doing them but I see why some people really don't enjoy painting cavalry it's one of those things isn't it some people either really like painting horses or they really don't I think the horses are fine just find these men are really little fiddly buggers to be honest with you probably getting a bit thick on the paint here Let's try and get it round problem is you're trying to be neat as well because you'd rather not I'd rather not go in and clean it all up after um so yeah that's looking okay so that's the front bit of red anyway and we've got the, the rear here but yeah is everyone working on Napoleonics at the minute? Are you doing some French? Are you doing some British, Prussians, uh, Russians, Spanish, you know, Portuguese? What are you what are you working on at the minute then? Or even if you're not working on Napoleonics, what are you working on and what sort of scale are you working at as well? You at 28 mil for your Napoleonics? Uh, five minutes to himself. Started following you for your bolt action between you and Seventh Son. I'm really tempted by Napoleonics. <laughs> yes, I've just played a, a bolt action game actually with uh, Liam. Uh, when was that? Wednesday. So I filmed it as well. So we got to film it. So that will be coming to the channel, and I'm probably going to end up doing. So like bolt action for a month as well. So kind of like the plan. I just swap around different projects for a month. It's just then you don't get bored, do you? A month just seems to be a, you can get a lot done in a month. So if you set yourself a realistic goal, you might actually achieve it. And then by the time a month comes around, you might get bored with that uh, particular period and you can move something else. And you don't get burnt out on it, which is really nice. Right, so there's the red. This is the thing. You know, I was a heavy bolt action player. I still am, still really enjoy bolt action. But I wanted something a little bit different. And this is the thing. I, I wanted something a bit different. And I found that in Napoleonics. Steve Reese is saying he's working on 6 mil British... Uh, Napoleonics, then some Bavarians as well. Very nice, very nice. I know you like your six mil, Steve. And Tony Tiger is saying it's getting expensive watching you and Martin. Purchase <laughs> back power start set and fucking shot start sets last week. Making myself finish the Arnhem Bridge bolt action theatre first. Very good idea. Treat then, you can treat yourself after. You can start your models after. That is a very good idea, but don't blame me. I'll just blame Martin because it's all Martin's fault because I got it from Martin's videos as well. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. Look at this. 60, 60 figures in a box, right? It were well, in the bag. Oh my God, that's another, that's two and a bit battalions there. How many is that? Yeah, two and a bit battalions there. <sighs> Crazy, isn't it? Hopefully I could do some skirmishes out of it maybe. And uh, I don't know, or maybe start the third battalion and uh, go from there. But I, I really wanted these old guard miniatures big time, so I got them the other day. I was like, I've got a month, I'm going to get them done, so why not? But 60 of the buggers, jeez Louise, that's going to take me a while. <laughs> that's definitely going to be a week's worth of a uh, week's worth of painting for me. But the starter set's a really good value because it gets you. Um, playing that period so you can play that period with the starter set and if you really like it you can then go you know get some more stuff that's the nice thing about it 
So to be honest with you, getting getting the starter sets is probably the you know the one thing I'd recommend because you also get the rules as well, which is really handy. You haven't got to spend out on the rules, and you get two sides. And if you can go in with a mate, even better, really. Yeah, I was meant to be um, meant to be playing a game tonight with Dom, but sadly he's not feeling great, so we have to call it off. And no, it's not COVID. He doesn't think he's just got a bit of a bit of a dodgy gut, but I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, sorry, I'm forgetting I'm meant to be on camera with this. I'm meant to try and show you bits of what I'm doing. So I'm just going over with the shaker and just going black. So for this, I'm just using matte black from the Army Painter. I'm trying to use some colours I don't normally use, and I know it sounds weird, but I normally use the Abaddon Black from Games Workshop. Um, but I have got the whole range of the Army Painter paint. So, you know, the it is a bit more matte black, to be fair. It's not as shiny as the... A bad and black. I feel like it's a little bit more satin than the, the bad and black. So, um, yeah, just going with the black with this. Again, not being overly neat. Uh, just trying to keep it within the lines. If I go over, I go over. I'll correct it. Because there's not a lot to do. But I'm making sure to get the boots as well here. Uh, da -da -da. Gran Pedro said... I finished the regiment of cavalry a few days ago, the 3rd Royal Hussar Guards. Today I started my last battalion of the Middle Guards. Well done, buddy. Well done with that. It felt good to finish the cavalry, did it? What sort of period are you going for then? What, um, what timings? What, uh, you know, I, I know a bit now about the Napoleonics because I watched uh, some stuff on it, some documentaries. And uh, when were the Middle Guard about? Were they about the whole time? Um... Or were they just about like pre eighteen twelve or that's the question because I'm trying to base most of my stuff around eighteen fifteen I'm trying but if failing to do so like for my Italians I, I can't base can't do them for eighteen fifteen but um, I'm just trying to get as close to eighteen fifteen as I can possibly because. I know my opponents won't mind me using Italians with an 1815 fiend army. So, Steve said, Ken, what colour did you use one horse next to the grey one? Oh, okay, yeah, that one. I'm just double checking for you, mate, because I've got, I've used a couple. Yep, that one is Skeleton Horde. So that one's a nice help in a Skeleton Horde, that one. These ones are uh, Agros Dunes, so you can see they're a bit darker there, and that is obviously, uh, that is Apothecary White over Grey Seer, so these are all over Grey Seer uh, spray, but that one is Skeleton Horde. It's quite a nice colour, isn't it? Sorry, I'm really thirsty. I have to just keep grabbing my can of lemonade. Oh, dear. Right. Black again. Yeah, I quite like this matte black, to be fair. It's actually quite nice. Contrast is king for horses. I'll just say that much. I will not paint horses any other way. Dee, 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 dee. So I'll just try to get these boots out of the way. As soon as I get that out of the way, then I can move on to a different colour. Yeah. Right, cool. That's the black. Let's make sure that's... Uh, yeah, that's good. Cool. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep, tiny bit of black there I missed. Wicked. So, 
one of the nicest things I like to do about uh, when I do my painting is actually get some of the to start making the miniature look like a human is the flesh. So I try to do that early. That's uh, tan. This is tan flesh. I've started using a uh, a mixture now. So I used to use uh, the Citadel. Oh, what is it called? I'll remember in a minute. Bugman's Glow. So I used to use Bugman's Glow all the time. But what I tend to do now is I tend to use a tan flesh. Okay. And then depending, because I mix my my, uh, my tones up, I then use uh, either a like a the flesh wash or, or this is where you can go even cooler. There's a couple of other options. So you've got uh, Dark Oath uh, flesh from uh, the contrast range. So you can wash that over the top. That gives you quite ni a nice dark, um, like orangey sort of skin colour. And then you've got uh, Firestone flesh. That again, that gives you a very dark colour. Or you can use Gilliman flesh as well, which is quite. It gives you more of a pale colour. Um, gives another another way to get different flesh tones across different miniatures. But then afterwards, if you're feeling like you want to do it, you can go in with Barbarian flesh as a highlight afterwards and it and it comes out really nicely actually and there's a nice variety of skin colors because obviously not everyone's skin is exactly the same color oh, move that almost out of the way so Grand Pedro said 100 days for almost all of my collection I will have the division of the grenadiers a uh, a pied from Waterloo. I don't know if that's meant to say a part from Waterloo. One battalion of infantry, two batteries of artillery, and the division commander to do. Oh, nice, nice one. Yeah, I'm at the minute. I've got uh, I've got some miniatures for command, and um, I am going to be doing my command, but that's going to be like a little treat. So, the I did three battalions a line, and. Um, kind of like to break it up I've done these cavalry this time now so this is my unit of different compared to because I've got a lot of lot of men to paint so just to break it up a bit differently I've gone with this but saying that these were the ones I've dreaded to paint the work the most because even though there's 12 figures when you glue them together you still got to do 24 because you've got to paint all the horses as well so it's still 12 and 12. Just trying to get this flesh around here. I am trying to be a bit neater with the flesh tones. And I don't, I don't know if anyone else has ever done it before, but actually painting on camera compared to like painting at home on your you know when you're on your own and stuff it, it is a lot different because this is not how I would normally paint so if I was painting I would normally have the minute minute I'd be very close to it so I'd probably be I don't know four or five inches away um, and then like leaning my wrists right up against the side here but I'm having to keep it over to try and keep it in camera so I'm having to stretch my head in at a funny angle that I wouldn't normally sit it at so I never paint my best when I'm on camera but it's good enough And Steve said, it's amazing how flesh changes a mini, even on 6 mil, it makes all the difference once it goes on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, doesn't it just? Makes such a difference. Makes everything look more human. That's if you're doing humans, of course. If you're doing like animals and stuff, when you when you paint there. You know the little extras so like when i've done the horses and stuff just paint painting that white bit on the top there and painting some socks on them just makes the massive difference to get that flesh in there because i can always neaten the green up nice and easy it'll go over really not really easily okay 
just got to get around the back of the head on these, so it's going to be a bit of a bit of a tight squeeze. Not the greatest angle for it, sorry. So yeah, like I say, I've, I've done, I'm doing this video just off the off cuff because I didn't get to go and uh, play tonight up Dom's. So I hope he does feel better. But let's say it's the start of Naps to Naptober. Hello, Millers, you're right. The worst cavalry to do is the hussars. They will suck your soul. <laughs> what? Because of the piping? Yeah. Guess what, Miller? Either I'll never have a stars, I'll buy ready painted ones, or I'll get someone to paint them for me, commission wise. <laughs> oh dear. Unless I buy a box, paint one at a time, but then just, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, paint one at a time, but over six months. These are quite nice and easy, to be fair. There's not many colours on them, is there, really? Even if I just get this one guy. I'm hoping to get both of these done, but it's probably just going to be the one. You never know. How quick can I work? No pressure or anything like that. You got some plan, then? I don't know. Not yet. There's none planned as of yet. Basically, whatever's the easiest and cheapest and quickest way for me to get a big army up together. Do you see what I mean, though? That you know, the flesh is on him now. Even though it's rough, it's, it still looks better than he does by far. Oh, bugger. The mistake. If you ever do that, don't panic. Just go in with a wet, something wet, like that. Okay. Then a dry, then a brush that's dry after. As long as it's still wet, because you should be thinning your paints anyway, you can just get it straight off like that. See, look, all gone now. Just get straight in there with the water. It'll water it down, soak it back in the brush. And then you're, you're good to go, really. If you knock a little bit, sometimes you just give it a little bit of a scrub and it comes off. It was like a second reaction for me. I was like, instant in the water. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like it's second nature. I do it so much. I say you can tell people thin their paints as well. Because you can get it off. If you don't thin your paints and you go on there globby, globby, globby. Yeah, very bad. You and an Aaron Lowe, you alright? Here's Minchers. Get a box of uh, oh, Caravaneras from, from Perry's. They look gorgeous. Yeah, they do. I did buy my first ever Victrix models though, guys. I keep pointing this out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be done, ain't it? You can't have a French army about these bad boys. Four sprues of goodness. Four sprues of goodness. I'll tell you the other thing, actually. I was actually quite impressed with these. Flags and all that jazz. Because... I quite like that because it's telling me what I can and can't do, which, uh, you know, for the middle there, it tells you how to do the loading and the firing, and you can repeat that step. But then what it also shows you on the next page, so it gives you these. So I can have two different types of firing poses, basically, you know, loading. So what I'm planning on one battalion to be loading, firing, uh, and the other battalion to be on the march. That's what, I'm, that's what I think I'm going to do. So yeah, because I haven't got a loading and firing battalion yet. Quite excited to do that. So one uh, doing that and one like that. I don't really like doing a massive mix. So I wouldn't have a load shooting and a load marching. 
I quite like the idea of doing a whole marching and a whole thing, uh, a whole like loading and firing. Quite excited about that. Looking forward to doing it. I'm going to get another battalion done of the uh, great coats first, though. So they're going to get done next after these, and then uh, a little bit too much paint on that. Yeah, they're going to get done a little bit after that. And then I will do, I think, ooh, I don't know, maybe I'll do the Colonel next after I've done another line battalion. I'm not too sure. It depends what I'm in the mood to paint. I've got all month, haven't I? So I've got all of October. I think realistically, I'm going to get all the, I'm going to try and get all the French done because I keep buying more French. <laughs> Oh dear, it does make me giggle. Because I've still got the British to do as well, which would be even funnier. But it's really weird actually, because I, I didn't think I'd like doing the French very much, but I just want to use them to crush Dom's soul, so that's what makes me laugh even more. <laughs> Miller's has put, gotta love the old guard. Hopefully, yours lasts longer on the table than the ones did against my. Yeah. I'll learn to use them properly. It's fine. It's fine. It will be fine. I'll tell you what else helps at the minute getting so much paint done is I've ordered one of these. I don't know if other people do like PC sort of stuff like that in gaming, but I've ordered a GTX 3080. And to do that, I sold my old graphics card. Um, so I'm without a graphics card in my computer at the minute, so I can't play any games. I can just bear, uh, well, I can do um, editing and stuff because I've got a good CPU, but it takes a bit longer. Um, but I can't literally play any video games, so <laughs> I'm pretty much to do my pastime is painting. Because that's pretty much what my hobby time consists of, is either painting or playing video games. You got any artillery planned? Yeah, I'll be doing some artillery. I will be doing some artillery, Martin told me. I certainly will, mate. I'll probably go with the Victrix sets again, maybe. Or if Warlord have a sale or something. Whoever's cheaper, basically, at the time. Or if I really like the look of like certain models. I don't mind buying second-hand models, you know. I never, I never have minded. Um, it doesn't bother me. If they've got a nice little paint job, I don't mind. And if they haven't, I can always strip them and redo them. So it, it really doesn't bother me. Right, that is the flesh tone done. Cool. It really makes a big difference. So next colour I'm going to go with is like a brown. They've got a couple of browns to go on. So first brown I'm going to use is German camouflage medium brown. And that's basically going to go down here on the stirrups. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Oh, that lemonade's going right through me. <laughs> It's going to go down here, and yeah, we'll do that next, and then uh, I'll put the brown on the rifle. Uh, I keep saying rifle; it's not a rifle on the musket. On the musket. Hello, Bill. Are you right? So, what's Miller saying here? If you try and get some done this month, you can also enter into the month's war game as an honest challenge. Yeah, true. Very true. I probably will try and get some done. Well, that's the plan, because if I don't get them done this month, they ain't going to get done next month, because I'm going to be doing some other theme. Um, I'm quite strict for that sort of thing. So, if I say I'm going to do something, like if I'm going to follow something, I will... Follow it to the letter. So if I say I'm not going to do anything else apart from paint Napoleonics this month, pretty much that's all I'm going to do is paint Napoleonics. Um, what we got here? So what's Bill Roy said? Hi, 
Uh, what white is that on the horse's saddles? Is it stand? It stands out nicely. It does, mate. Um, so basically, to do that, what I've done is I've used Eschen Grey uh, spray primer uh, from the contrast. Uh, what you can get from Games Workshop, but you can buy Eschen Grey from uh, Games Workshop in a pot. Uh, as well as like a base primer and um, so you could always do that if you don't want to buy the rattle can um, but then I've used matte white from the army painter over the top of it and then what I did after that so it stands out a little bit a little bit more I did a wash of known oil but this is the important thing I used known oil I also used technical contrast medium so i use the medium but you can use the army paint uh, quick shade medium as well it does the same thing um basically what it does is thins it down and doesn't make it as dull but i used one part known oil uh, to about three parts contrast medium and uh yeah so it's not even one to two so it's really is watered down and a very light thing and you can see it just sits nicely in the recesses and it looks good and then i don't bother going over it after that I literally just put the wash on it and then leave it and I think it looks really good. I hope that I hope that helps, Bill. Um if you've got anything else you want to ask, mate, just ask. Please ask. Um Steve's put what in what's in mind for next month then? Anything in mind? Yes, mate, I have actually. I've got a couple of things in mind. I haven't made up my mind a hundred percent yet. But I have got a couple of things in mind, so wonder if anyone can help me out with this. So I've got uh, ACW six mils. That's that is definitely one of the front runners. Um, I've got a Confederate and I've got a Union Army. I ordered it from Bacchus and it's arrived. So I've got both of those to do. Um, there's also obviously I've got I could get a bolt act, another bolt action. Uh, box set and like if i was going to do that i'd probably go with the american paratroopers and i'd probably paint well i would i'd paint that in contrast because i really like the i've done a contrast video on those american paratroopers and um really happy with how they actually turned out i think they look really well for for contrast for the d-day sort of uh paint scheme i'm i'm really quite happy with them i think they look fantastic to be honest and a lot of people have said that in my video that i kind of nailed the color with the contrast paints i did like a mix between uh the agros dunes if i remember rightly and the uh, plague bear of flesh even see that even i can't remember 100 percent what i did i'd have to watch my video back to find out um and that is one bonus of doing youtube videos because they stay there and i've got like an archive of what i actually did for things but yeah that would be the other thing probably Not too sure though, mate. Not too sure. I don't know what everyone else thinks. Uh, Tony Tiger. Yeah, Tony Tiger's put... Uh, oh, Steve knows you. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay, I know you. Yeah, <laughs> of course I do. Six mil. <laughs> been me a long time, Steve. You've been me a long time, mate. Uh, Tony Tiger's put... Do you find contrast paint works where works better on the grey seer? Um, depending on the application I want to use it for. So if I'm using historicals, yes, it does because it dulls it down. Um, the wraith bone makes it quite bright, um, and pops quite well. And white does that even more. So basically, the whiter the color, the the, the brighter the color. So the whiter the color is, the more it's going to pop and look more fantasy, sort of cartoony. So. If I was doing, say, Warhammer um, Fantasy, I'd probably use an undercoat of, of, depending on the army, if it was dwarves, I'd probably use uh, Wraithbone. But like if I was using something that I really wanted to pop, like I was doing 40k and I was doing Harlequins, for example, and I wanted them to really pop and be really bright, I would use a white, um, so that Corax white. But... Again, it's it's each to everyone else. The grey seer is good for historicals because it doles everything down as an undercoat. So there's loads of videos online. If you do, um, I know that I know they're not. They, well, you, I don't know actually. I don't know if anyone's done it for historicals. 
don't know if anyone's done any comparing graphs or historicals um, for different colours, but I know there's like fantasy ones online, and you can see the difference between like white, uh, the Eshen Grey, and uh, the Wraith Bone are. But the only other nice thing about these is they really do go on smooth, the the, uh, the sprays. They really do. Um, and that's one thing I can't flaunt Games Workshop for for these. And it's really bloody annoying. So paint, their rattle cans are so expensive. But that is literally, excuse me saying, what do they say? As smooth as a baby's bottom. And it literally is smooth. There's no grittiness. There's no nothing on it. Um, and they've done a really good job in, uh, in doing that. And it really works well with the contrast paints. Right, so that's that brown. Literally only needed it for that. But now, this is probably one of my favourite browns. It's this flat brown from Vallejo. And I'm, I've nearly gone through the whole pot and it's a drop of bottle. Um, but this is absolutely one of the best browns that I've ever used. Such a nice colour. And the majority of all my like rifles or muskets are all in this colour. Because I just love it so much. I think oh, I just such a great colour. Really is a great colour. So I'm just gonna go and do the, the woodwork on the musket at the minute. Again, I'm not a hundred percent worrying about being too neat because if needs be I can touch it up with a metallic in a minute. But what I will tell everybody, this isn't the musket, this is a pouch on the back here. What I will say to everyone, and this is not a joke, and this is quite like funny, um, in regards to how I found painting. I can tell you now, right, I've had this brush about three, four months now, okay? And it's got to be one of the best brushes I've ever used, right? Okay, and that's it there. It's a Creative Models 335502, okay? Uh, Red Stable Kalinsky brush. All right, I think this has personally kept its tip for so long because I haven't painted any metallics with this, I haven't painted any washes, and I haven't painted any contrast stuff with it. This has literally just been using normal base coats. Um, and to do the other the other applications, I've used other brushes, and I can tell you straight away that these are starting to suffer a bit. So I would honestly recommend if you were gonna like a tip i'd give everyone a tip have a brush for each application you're using so if you've got metallics have a metallic brush if you've got washes have a, have a wash brush small medium large whatever you're going to use um you know if you, your base layer in brushes you're layering and you're highlighting keep that brush separate don't put metallics in it and don't put washes in it Underdog painting, you alright? What's up, man? And the minute my ceiling. Ree. <laughs> uh, do you find the contrast? Yeah, uh, Miller's put. I like the look of those paint brushes you've got there. Uh, yeah, these these are Battle Lab ones. This is definitely my favourite. Uh, Steve's put. Would you ever mix and match the primer, for example, if you needed to brighten up on a uniform, use the bone colour, but on say the saddle user grey or is that no benefit no 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 that's a really good that's a that's a very good uh very good um thing to do you just use some blue tack stick it over the bit of area you don't want to get primed that straight off the bat um and do it like that or you could just use um, you could just prime it all one colour but then go over with like a, a brighter colour like a white before you do it and here's a tip for you as well it's going to sound really weird if you paint yellow okay, and you want it to be bright paint pink under it first it sounds really really weird okay, really strange but I'll tell you now it works wonders paint pink under it and you will get a bright yellow. I don't know why it does it, I don't know how it does it, but it does, and it looks incredible. Hey, these are only like two pound, two pound 35. Spot on, absolutely spot on. I 
I did the same the other week. I uh, what's the word? I I I binned off a load of old brushes, kept a couple just for like PVA glue applications. But I got this Army Painter um, Masterclass brush. I use it occasionally, but I seriously think this is better. It's Kalinsky's again. And this is about 13 quid. So I'm just going to try and concentrate because I do want to get these guys finished. <laughs> it's lovely chatting, don't get me wrong, but it is nice sometimes to actually get off because otherwise I will forget to get these done. It'd be nice to get both of these done in a minute just to show you guys off some stuff. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm meant to be painting miniatures. I've never used a Windsor and Newton. Um, they're probably very good, but I've got no need really to spend the money on it if I've got a good brush and I'm happy of how it's performing. Why change? I will definitely be buying more of these though. Remember as well, I do uh, I do do airbrushing as well for uh, my base layering and bits and bobs. Pretty much how my Italians were done. To be fair, was uh, I did a Eschen Grey uh, over them first, and then I used if you got an airbrush, Liquitex White Ink. Uh, use that over it's titanium white is the colour but it's Liquitex is the brand um, I did that over them all went and painted the detail highlights and then did that wash mixture I said earlier so one part known oil to about three or four parts uh, technical contrast medium went over the whole thing done, model's finished really quick, really easy really simple Them creative ones. What's the biggest model you've painted? Uh, I painted a knight from uh, War, Warhammer 40k. So I painted an Imperial Knight. And I did that all with brushwork as well. No airbrush. Because I didn't have an airbrush at the time. So I have painted some bigger models. The smallest stuff I've painted so far is... Uh, Epic Space Marine stuff, Warhammer Epic. That was six mil. I like six mil. I never like getting in a conversation with Steve on here because he always makes me think about six mil and it really like it distracts me. <laughs> I just got a thing for six mil and I don't know what it is. I like it too much. Right, so that's the brown for those done anyway. Okay, and um, last colour I ever do is white, so that'll be the last one. But got a couple more colours to go first. So uh, what we could do? What did I do for the bags of these? Oh yeah, so I did do a darker brown. So I've, so there you go. I've got a darker brown just to paint on these straps here. Um, get back and do that quickly. Darker brown. Don't know what you mean. <laughs> Miller's mentioned Steve's told me the Confederates look brilliant. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I have seen them. They 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 are nice. There's some he's done some nice work on them. What I'll do with these as well. Obviously, I've got brown around here. I'll just they're meant to be the lighter brown, but I'll go dark on the back, just because you ain't gonna see it. Um, and just as long as it's got a different brown to green, you won't notice it. And I've got that brown out while I remember to do it. Okay. 
if you're not already be sure in the link in the comments below there's uh, the miniature war gaming warriors facebook group if you join that i'll be updating it with like progress stuff of the video of like videos and all that sort of jazz especially pictures with these of the napoleonics throughout the month if you're interested um i've got a patreon page on there as well if you want to check that out you don't have to it's just there in case anyone wants to do any tipping or anything like that all goes back on the channel anyway i bought some uh i've actually i think i've got one patreon at the minute and yeah i took out 25 dollars i think it was and i bought some new um paint brushes with it not paint brushes sorry um i've got some paint brush cleaner and i got oh what are they called come to me in a minute weathering sticks like weathering brushes sort of things i bought some of them and I also bought some Luke APS's, some of his base ready stuff, which is really nice. Do, 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 do. Bill, I have a division of Adler Six Mill Napoleonic Russians and French. I have to get the, get painted. Yes, you do, sir. Yes, you do. Yes, you need to get them done, mate. Why not set yourself a challenge, buddy? Do what I do. That's how. That's do you know. What? That's how a majority of my stuff gets painted. Do you know what? I'm going to undercoat. I'm going to be a bit different. I'm going to be a bit of a rebel. I'm going to be a bit of a rebel. I'm going to go with the darker colour on the front of these as well and then just go with the fur brown because it'll be easier to cover. See, it's little painting hacks like that. Because fur brown's quite a light brown. So if I go with a darker brown and then go the lighter brown over the top, it will sit a bit better than it will a couple of layers of brown on green. So let's do that instead. Yeah, what was I saying? Sorry. Yeah, try give it. I'll tell you what, Bill. What you want to do, mate, honest, honestly, is set yourself a challenge, right? So say like you're, fin you're painting what you're painting now. Okay, I don't know what you're painting. So you're painting some 28 mil, yeah? Just do it. Just just say to yourself, right, okay, it's October now, right? Give yourself a realistic time of clearing off your desk. So a couple of weeks, maybe. I don't know how long it takes you to paint, but you know. So say it takes you two or three weeks to finish that, that batch of what you're doing. Say to yourself, right. Okay, I've got all these. I've spent all this money on it. You know what? If I do this, I've got a six mil army. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do these six mils, and then I can play six mil Russian versus French. How cool is that? And then it's done. And it is. It's done. Just find it. I just need sometimes. I need the motivation. I'll tell you what. Having a channel does that. Really does. Because you don't want to let people down, and you really want to. Really want a thingy. <laughs> oh, um, Alpha Alpha seven six uh, seven seven six three. He's got a shop. And that's where I get these brushes from. So I don't know if he wants to just link that in the chat if I need to authorize it. But that's where I buy these brushes from. If you're looking for the same brush. Do, do, do. Right, okay. I think that's the last. Oh, I keep, see, look, I keep missing that bit. Bit of bloody brown there. There you go. There we go. All right, nice bit of brown there. Bit of brown there. Bit of brown there. That's it. Oh, you already did. Oh, okay. Happy days. Wicked. Right, okay. Uh, so I've done the brown. What do I want to do next? Okay, so metallics next, I think. So gunmetal. It's going to go over the musket, the sabre. Uh, and also uh, the, oh my god, I've forgotten the name. 
Scabbard. That's it. There you go. Have a brainwave. But yeah, there goes that. And here comes the other brush. So this gets put aside for my metallics. There we go. Right, get that in there. Happy days. Metallic's already starting to make everything look good. Right, okay. Always put metallics. Around where the trigger is and the trigger guard. Normally do that same colour as the actual musket itself. But if you notice, I'm not being too neat. Just trying to get the green covered. Alright, okay. So scabbers done, that's done. The other cool thing about cavalry is you can sit them on your finger like this. And they seem to sit quite nicely. Against all logic, <laughs> I will aim to get the Russians done in November, being boring green and <laughs> out of the way. Then I have the French, hopefully by the end of January. Got other projects to do as well. Yes. Yes, everyone, yes I agree, Bill. There's always projects to be done. Cool, there's a scabbard, sabre. Okay, and what I've been doing on these French anyway, I've been just not even painting. It's basically just giving it a little side of the brush, just on the helm, just on the uh, shaker there. Because they they've got instead of gold they use like a silvery grey sort of colour and it just works quite nicely. Okay. Right. Oh, not much actually. Uh, Miller said, how much have I spent so far? Uh, let's work this out. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Probably about 100. Yeah, probably about 100 quid. Um, and out of that, I can make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight battalions of line infantry, probably a, a, a battalion like for Volta Gers, um, cavalry battalion, uh, command, and I will probably get. Oh, yeah, I've got some casualty markers as well, part of that money as well. So I've got some French cavalry markers. So compared to Games Workshop, uh, not very much. <laughs> Do you think those 60 old guard are like 20 quid? Oh, what's Miller's put? Or do you have none? No, us mention money spent when the hobby and the mister in house. No, nah, it's fine. She knows. She knows I spend my money on it. She knows. She's a good lady. She's a very good lady. What I'll do 
because I'm just going to concentrate on this one guy because I want to get him done before the end of the stream so you can just see him on, on top of the horse anyway. Um, so next colour will be, right, for gold, you've got the army paint golds, but I like the uh, Games Workshop Retributor Armour because I, uh, I think it's just a nicer dense gold. Each to their own again. No, seeing as that's like probably 300 figures plus, that's uh, not bad. Perry's box, isn't it? It's Perry's as well. You can get 44 with that. So is that, that's what I mean. You get 44 with Perry's and 60 with a Victrix. That's 100 miniatures already for, for 40 quid. I'm just putting a strap on around here. But what you can what you can do sometimes, you don't want to do this. You can just file that down, make it smooth, and just paint it all flesh. Um, especially if you make a mistake sometimes, like I've done in the past. And uh, I've had to file it down and just paint it all as flesh anyway. And I do gold just around on this uh, saber here. Okay, it's a bit light. Make it a bit thicker than that. That's it. Have you bought any command yet? And of course, artillery. Artillery's got artillery. I'm going to buy. It's going to probably be the Victrix. Um, I've got one command and that was gifted to me by Martin, seventh son, when I went up there. Um, we did like, well, I, I didn't know he was going to give that to me and I, I gave him some stuff. So I gave him some uh, Fulcrum Jaeger, uh, World War II, uh, German sprue. And he gave me a colonel, a French colonel, and a couple of lancers. Um, so I'm going to make a command out of that. And I've got some casualty markers as well, maybe, because I really like how he does his commands there and they're nicer big bases like this. And, uh, they do look very, very nice, and that's how I'm going to plan on doing mine, to be fair, because I think they look absolutely cracking. I also put a bit of metallic uh, gold just there on, like, the... I call it the working parts of the musket, because that's just what I know it as, but I'm sure it's something else. Just double-checking, yeah, it's why I thought it was. Okay, right... Buttons as well. I can't really pick them out at the minute, but there are a couple of buttons just there, and they'll go gold as well. And what I want now is a little bit of red, and then we should be on to the white. Again, the same red as earlier. And that's just going to go on the, on the scabbard here. The scabbard, sorry, the saber. Okay. All right, wicked. Okay, now white. People hate painting white. Okay, I don't blame them because it's a crap color to paint. It's a real pain in the bum. But this matte white is quite good. I quite like it. Always comes out the bloody bottle too quick as well. I don't need another bottle of it, but I quite like it. So it's one of the only paints I don't actually thin out the bottle. Okay. I tend to just wet the brush. The brush is wet at the minute and I don't dry it. So, And then I just smooth it out as much as I can. I 
and I find just with having that wet brush it makes the paint just the right consistency just for smoothness and it just works Right, so there's an initial layer of the white, okay? Doesn't look the best, okay? But what I'll do is I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes, and while that's drying, I'll come around the side here because there's some more white here, and I'll pick that bit out. Again, I'll just do that, and then... If I've got a little bit left over on my brush like that, I'm just going to go over it. Alright. Okay. All right, that's pretty dry to touch because it's quite thin. Again, I will go in again. A second coat. You can already see with a second coat, the white is already looking a hundred times better, but you don't want it to be thick. That's one thing you don't want is thick white paint. There's nothing looks worse. You want to spread it out. Again, I'm just going to go over that. Let that dry a little bit and I'll probably just go one more coat with that. But also as well, what I'll do just for reference, I'll just have a look over the other models I've done and just double check there's no white anywhere else on these. Which no, there isn't. So as long as I'm happy of where I've painted white, which I pretty much am, I'll do the last bit. Okay, that's pretty much good enough for me. I'm happy with that. It's smooth enough. So I let that dry, basically. I let that dry for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Go and watch something on telly or something. Come back, and before I go to bed, because I tend to do this a lot, if I've got like stuff I need to wash and I want it to be completely dry, is I'll put a wash over it, um before I go to bed because I know then at least it gets 10 hours drying before I touch it again um, and I'm just gonna just have one more quick look over the mini in case I've missed anything so on the bottom here I've missed some brown and that gold's a bit thin for my liking so just go in a bit of gold because wet palette keeps the paint wet go in just make it a bit uh, a bit thicker, another coat. Because remember, you got to put a wash over it yet, and that will make it sink in the recesses, make it stand out a bit. So yeah, and then a bit of brown. Can't beat a bit of brown. Just under there. And there. And there. Right, that's pretty much it, guys. That's him done, really, realistically. Might have a couple of other bits I might want to do to him. But yeah, realistically, that is him finished. And I'm pretty happy. 
of how that's done. Uh, just while I'm closing up, just to show you how quick horses are, I'll talk probably for a couple of minutes now and uh, I'll just get this horse uh, painted like based wise. And I will use Agosh Dunes. So, so yeah, what's everyone what's everyone uh, thinking? Everyone looking forward to Napoleonic month this month on the channel? Remember you've got Martin's Ancient Month as well. He's doing Ancients all month, isn't he? Fair play. Gonna be some nice content coming, I think. I think the community on a whole's got some really nice content out there at the moment. I think everyone's doing some good things. But yeah, you can see how quick these horses paint up. This is why I just do them sporadically, like between different jobs. So while I'm waiting for something to dry, I will just paint a horse because that's the, the base layering done. Get that around there. But yeah, I think I think uh, I think I'm gonna do, I think I might actually do pretty well for this month. I don't know. I don't know how many battalions I'm gonna end up uh, actually finishing. Uh, you know, I can only hope I do them all. <laughs> I doubt it, but you, you never know. You never know, do you? If you get those paint uh, paint uh, juices flowing, you just don't know what's gonna happen, do you? So. It's pretty insane. Right. Right, that's all underneath the horse done anyway. I haven't tried airbrushing them with contrast. It does I know if you airbrush with contrast it doesn't give you the same effect as um, the contrast paint's designed to do so it wouldn't sit in the recesses very well it'd just be like a normal airbrush sort of spray um, and I've paid over the top for these <laughs> for uh, just being able to use them as contrast paint so I'm not going to waste them by uh, by doing that but not something I've tried I've seen a lot of videos on it though Right, horse is near enough painted up. This all his flesh is anyway. Do 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 do. do. And the front of the mouth. And tiny bit there, done. He's done. Right, painted, base layered. Finitoed. That's how quick they are to just like paint like that. Very quick. I'll just let that dry. But yeah, guys, all I can say is thanks very much for watching. It's been really nice having you along this week. And um, let's read out what Bill's was just put here he's put uh, the plastic show on a monday is brilliant because of the variety and of course for the four personalities of course martin is going to have a paint and some ancient opponents or talk to you in doing something yeah exactly exactly we all do different things so it all uh what do you might call it we all do different bits and bobs so we've got four different personalities and i'm glad you enjoy the monday show because at the end of the day it's there just for people to be able to paint and do some other bits and bobs of uh Put the camera on the table today because i've had a few requests to do that i hope you guys liked having the camera on the table you probably didn't want to see my ugly mug as it was <laughs> uh, but let me know Get, stick some comments in the comment section below um of what you think of these live streams if you've enjoyed them or not because it helps me a lot and it also gets the live streams out there a little bit more and um, people get to see it 
and uh, but I just want to say thanks very much for watching guys I'll see you again very soon but remember there's a painting tutorial video for French Napoleonics in great coats coming out tomorrow so keep an eye out for that one thanks bye bye